The title of this ECE 201 lesson is How to Solve for State Variables in RL and RC Circuits with Step Function Sources. We've previously looked at circuits such as this where a capacitor is connected to a circuit represented by a Thevenin equivalent with a time varying voltage source. And we've also looked at the response of the inductor current to a circuit represented by a Norton equivalent with a current source that has some general time variation. Recall that the capacitor voltage and the inductor current are state variables and that they determine the state of energy stored in the capacitor and the inductor, and as such cannot change instantly with time. In our previous lesson titled, A General Approach to Solving First Order RL and RC Circuits, was that the general form of the solution for the state variable, that is either the capacitor voltage or the inductor current, was equal to the sum of two terms. The first term depended on the initial value of the state variable and a time constant, and the second term depended on the functional form of the sources of electrical energy, either V sub S or I sub S. And that second term involves carrying out an integral in which the source term, X of T, is part of the integrand. And in this lesson, we will consider that X of T, either a voltage source input or a current source input, to be a step function in terms of the nature of its time variance. Consider, for example, a first order RC circuit in which the voltage source is equal to a constant times the step function. The step function, recall, goes from a value of 0 for t less than 0 to a value of 1 for t greater than or equal to 0. Our results will also apply to circuits such as we see on the right hand side of the screen in which a switch changes position at some time t, say t equals to zero. We start with the general form of the result for arbitrary time variation. And we note that x is equal to a constant times the step function. Note the use of a dummy variable z in the integral as we integrate over time from zero to t, the time of interest. Since the step function is equal to unity for t greater than the zero, this is the integral that we start with. Integrating that exponent, e to the z over tc, provides 1 over tc times the exponent evaluated between the integral limits of 0 and t. This, with the other terms, yields the second line that we see on this slide. Carrying out those limits of integration yields that the value of the integral equals the constant xs times e to the minus t over tc times the quantity e to the t over tc minus 1. Now the integral was just one of the two terms on the right hand side of the equal sign for the state variable. The other term depended on the initial condition. If we add the two terms together, we have the first equation on this slide. Should note that a little algebra has been done on that last term, multiplying through by e to the minus t over tc. But in any case, please note that we can rewrite the right hand side of the equation as the quantity y of 0 minus x sub s times e to the minus t over tc and then plus x sub s. Well, let's apply these mathematical results to an RC circuit with a step function input. Prior to t equals 0, the voltage source had a value of 0, and then at t equals 0, the voltage source increases abruptly to vs. And in terms of relating this to the previous work, note that y, the state variable, is now the capacitor voltage. y of 0, the initial value of the state variable, is the initial value of the capacitor voltage. And the constant associated with the step function is now v sub s, the height of the step function. And with those correspondence, the capacitor voltage as a function of time can now be written as seen here. vc as a function of time is the quantity. Vc of 0 minus Vs times the exponential e to the minus 2 over Tc, and then plus V sub S. Now, another useful and insightful observation is at the bottom of the screen. V sub S may be noted to actually be the final value of the capacitor voltage, because as T goes to infinity, the circuit becomes a DC circuit. Nothing's changing with time anymore. It's just the voltage source V sub S in series with R and C. The DC model of a capacitor is an open circuit, so no current flows through the resistor, 
so there's no voltage across the resistor. And by Kirchhoff's voltage law, the capacitor voltage is just equal to the voltage source value, V sub s. So another way to write the result for the capacitor voltage as a function of time is quantity initial value of capacitor voltage minus final value of capacitor voltage times e to the minus t over tc plus the final value. Now those observations could also have been made for the inductor circuit we saw at the beginning of the lecture. That is to say, the inductor current equals the initial value minus the final value times e to the minus t over tc plus the final value of the inductor current. So considering the general state variable representation, y of t, we may say that y of t equals the initial quantity minus the final times e to the minus tc plus the final value. Thus, finding the state variable is going to be a four-step process. First, find the initial value. Second, find the final value. Thirdly, find the time constant, either RC, Thevenin resistance times capacitor, or L over R, L over Norton resistance. And the fourth and final step is just incorporate those three numerical values in the equation seen in the center of this screen. Let's apply that methodology that we've just described to the circuit we see here. It says the switch has been open for a, a long time, quote unquote. That means it's been open for many time constants. So any time variation has ceased and it is a DC circuit. Then at t equals zero, the switch is closed. So the rest of the circuit sees a voltage source that may be described as 15 volts times the step function. How do we solve for Vc of t? We do our four steps. Find the initial value of the capacitor voltage, then the final value of the capacitor voltage. Thirdly, find the time constant, and then put those three quantities into the equation that we've just described. As for the initial voltage, step one, for t less than zero, the switch is open. Any voltage on the capacitor has a discharge path through the 500 ohm resistor and the 2K resistor. So the capacitor voltage will be zero prior to t equals zero because that switch has been open for a long time. And since the capacitor voltage is a state variable in the absence of infinite power, the value of the capacitor voltage can't change instantly. So if t equals zero minus is the time just before the switch closes, and then t equals zero plus is the time just after the switch closes, Vc at t equals zero minus is equal to V sub c at t equals zero plus, and the initial value of this circuit's capacitor voltage at t equals zero is equal to zero. And now for a second step in the process. Find the final value of the capacitor voltage. After that switch closes, the circuit sees a voltage source of constant value, 15 volts. And after a long time, many time constants, we just have a DC circuit. Time variations will cease, and we may represent the capacitor as its DC equivalent, an open circuit. Note that there's no current through the 500 ohm resistor under these conditions and no voltage therefore across the 500 ohm resistor. So the capacitor voltage is then equal to the voltage across the 2K resistor, which we may find by voltage division to be 11.5 volts. And now we have two of the three values we need to solve for V sub C as a function of time. Now a third step is to find the time constant, RC, where R is the Thevenin resistance seen by that capacitor. Let's use the look back equivalent resistance method for that. Turn off the voltage source, that is replace it by a short circuit. The equivalent resistance is equal to 500 ohms plus the parallel combination of the 2K resistor and the 600 ohm resistor. Rounding that off to the nearest ohm is 962 ohms. So R times C is equal to 962 times 10 to the minus seventh or 96.2 microseconds. So the time constant is 96.2 microseconds. Well, congratulations to us. We have the three numbers we need to use in our general equation to find the state variable of a first order RL or RC circuit when there's a step function input. And after inserting those values, we find that VC of T is equal to 11.5 volts times the quantity 1 minus e to the minus t over tc, which is also 11.5 volts times the quantity 1 minus e to the minus 10,400 times t. 
So note that we were able to use simple DC equivalent circuits to find the initial value of the state variable and the final value of the state variable, but it's that expression for y of t, that state variable equation for first order RL and RC circuits with step inputs, that allows one to determine quantitatively how the state variable gets from one state to the other. The value of the time constant provides information about the speed of response of the system and as such is a very important property to know about a circuit. Notice that at t equal 96.2 microseconds, that is at t equal one time constant, the value of the capacitor voltage has reached 63% of its final value. After two time constants, it's reached 86% of the final value. After three time constants, it's reached 95% of the fi final value. And after 4.6 time constants, it's reached 99% of the final value. As a rule of thumb, circuits people often consider five time constants to be enough for the system to have reached its new value. That is to say, it's within 1% of its final value. should say here near the end of this lesson that it's important for us to note, and I didn't mention this before, that one cannot use the state variable equation for circuit variables that aren't state variables. Suppose in our last example we wanted to find the current through the 2k ohm resistor as a function of time. Well, our equation for y of t wouldn't apply, and it doesn't apply because unlike state variables, non-state variables in a circuit have no fundamental limitation on how fast they can change. There's no requirement, for example, that a current through an ideal resistor at t equals zero minus has to be the same as at t equals zero plus. Of course, we often do want to know the time variation of resistor currents, voltages, capacitor voltages, inductor currents, and other non-state variables. But the strategy in those cases is to first find the state variables and then use that information plus usual circuit solving to solve for non-state variables. In summary, in this ECE 201 lesson, we've developed an equation to use to solve for the state variable in a first order RL or RC circuit with the step function input, that is for the capacitor voltage or for the inductor current. And the equation states that the state variable as a function of time is equal to the quantity initial value minus final value times e to the minus t over tc plus the final value. And that tc is the time constant. We've discussed the role that time constants play in providing quantitative information about how fast a circuit can switch from one state to another. That's an important figure of merit in many electronic systems. And I'd like to thank you, as always, for watching this lesson.